All right, here's a quick introduction to the chain rule. As is often the case, the most important thing you need to know is what the chain rule is. Here's the formula for it right here. I think I'll make another video that shows where this formula comes from, um, but for most people's purposes, they'll probably be happy just to know what it is, so maybe some of you should just take it on faith and memorize what it is. Um, and basically what it does, if you remember, one of our main goals in Calculus 1 is to be able to take pretty much any derivative you can think of. And the way we do that is by we learn some really simple derivatives, and then we learn how to put those pieces together. So in the product rule, we learned how to take the derivative of two of those pieces multiplied together. In this rule, what we're going to do is learn how to take the derivative of two of those pieces composed together. Uh, function composition gives people a little bit more trouble than multiplication, so usually this rule people think is a little bit more difficult than the product rule. Um, it ends up being a lot more powerful than the product rule, probably the most important thing you'll learn in Calculus 1. Um, so maybe the best way to think about it is to start out with an example. So if you look at this problem right here, we're asked to take the derivative of the cubed root of 3x squared plus x plus 5. So hopefully when you look at this, if you don't know the chain rule, you might think of, try to get a little clever, think of ways to solve this, but hopefully you will get stuck and not be able to come up with anything because this is a problem which we need the chain rule to solve. And so what you do is you look at this big thing that we're trying to take the derivative of, and you realize that it's too complicated. We don't know how to take its derivative immediately. But if we can break down this big thing into a composition of two simpler functions, and we know the derivative of each of those simpler functions, then we can apply the chain rule. So in this case, what we're looking for is what I'll refer to as an outside function and an inside function. Figuring out what those functions are is something that takes a little getting used to. Maybe it's one of the harder parts of the chain rule. Um, maybe I'll just say what they are and then we can talk ourselves into why they're correct. In this case, our outside function is the cubed root of x, which I'll write as x to the 1 3rd. And the inside function is 3x squared plus x plus 5. So really what we're doing is function decomposition here. We have a big function. We want to decompose it into two smaller parts. Um, that's a technique that you usually learn in a Math 111 class. Um, gives people a lot of trouble. Takes a little getting used to. But um, just kind of stick with me. Hopefully eventually you'll get the hang of it. One nice thing is that you can guess at what you think these might be. As you start to look at these, you'll start to get the hang of what your best guess might be. The most common mistake would be to switch up f and g, but it's a lot easier to compose these two guys together than it is to decompose this guy. That is, going from here to here is a lot easier than going from here in the other direction. Um, if you compose these two guys together, if we want to know what f of g of x is, to check our answer to make sure we do in fact get back here, what you do is you're like, okay, f of x is x to the 1 third. So f of anything in here, you replace the x with whatever that anything is. So in this case, that anything is this 3x squared plus x plus 5. So we're going to look at this function, and instead of writing x, we're going to write all this stuff. So we would have 3x squared plus x plus 5 raised up to the 1 third power, which sure enough is what we were trying to get at. So once you get those parts, the rest goes kind of similarly to what we've seen in the product and the quotient rule. First thing you want to know is what are their derivatives? x to the 1 third, we'll use the power rule there, bring the exponent down in front, and then subtract 1 from what the old exponent was. 1 third minus 1, you can think of that as 1 third minus 3 thirds, in other words, negative 2 thirds. Derivative of g is a little bit easier, just a bunch of power rule in here, but all the exponents are integers, which is nice. And this is just 6x plus 1. And now that you have all these pieces, we have everything necessary, everything on this side of the rule, in order for us to figure out this derivative. So we'll kind of take these pieces, build them back up. See, the first thing we want here is f prime of g of x. So again, there's some function composition going on here f prime is this guy, but we don't want f prime of x, we want f prime of g of x. So instead of writing x, everywhere you see an x in this expression, we're going to replace it with g of x. 
that is we're going to have one third and then instead of x 3x squared plus x plus 5 all raised up to the negative two-thirds power. There's the negative two-thirds right there. Um, be careful, you're still not done. We just took care of this part right here. We still have to multiply by g prime of x, which is 6x plus 1. Make sure you get the parentheses here, otherwise it would just be 6x times all this stuff, and then plus 1. But you want 6x plus 1 times all this stuff. So that is the derivative, that is the chain rule. Um, this is a good method for beginners to kind of get the hang of the chain rule. However, to tell you the truth, I don't know anybody that finds chain rule derivatives using this method. Um, a better way to do it, maybe a more advanced way, that eventually you'll want to do, but at the start you might want to start out this way and sort of see if you can understand it this other way, is to look at the thing we're trying to take the derivative of and kind of think about that in terms of layers. And really, this is no different from what we're doing here, decomposing this into two different functions. But when you look at this, I want you to think about it like we have this outside function here, the cubed root of, and then we have an inside function. That color might be a little too similar. Let's go with green. Then we have an inside function, 3x squared plus x plus 5. So we want to take the derivative of this guy, and the way we'll take the derivative, this really isn't that different than this method here, maybe it's just another way to think about it, but the way we will take that derivative, we want the derivative of all this stuff, is by peeling off layers from the outside in. So the first layer we're going to want to peel off is this cubed root part. We know that the derivative of a cubed root is one third and the exponent changes to negative two thirds so we've kind of peeled out this outside part and we're gonna leave the inside part completely alone we're gonna leave it as 3x squared plus x plus 5 and so what we've done so far is we've taken care of the red part but we still have to take care of the green part so the way to think about it in your head is we've kind of erased this cubed root right here. We've taken that part of the derivative already, but we haven't taken the derivative of the green part yet. But that's what we'll do now. We'll multiply this by the derivative of this green part, 6x plus 1. So really, it's not that different than this method up here, um, but this way ends up going a lot quicker. And when you have chain rules inside of chain rules, this above method can be really tedious whereas this bottom method can be a lot nicer. So there's the chain rule in two different methods. To summarize, I recommend starting out this way, but try to understand this way as you're going because this way will end up being better as you go.